One of the few times that John Fuang accepted an invitation to a meal. He went to the house of one of his students whose sister was also a Dharma practitioner. And instead of chatting, we, we had a Dharma conversation, or John Fuang had a Dharma conversation with the hosts. And the woman's sister said, I've been meditating, just getting my mind as empty as possible. And John Fung says, no, 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 don't do that. When the mind is empty, anything can come into it, good, bad. It's like leaving the door of your house open. You've got to have work for the mind to do. You've got to have a direction for the mind. This is why we have right view, to remind us that we have a path that takes us from our suffering to the end of suffering. You've got to keep that direction in mind. It's only when you get to the very end of the path that you can start practicing what they call undirected concentration. But until you get to that point, you have to have a strong sense of direction. Because otherwise the mind will just go off in all sorts of directions. There are a lot of strange ideas about what meditation is about. and One of the strangest is that by getting the mind open and empty, your natural wisdom will come to the surface. And it is true that there are times when something that's been hidden inside you, but kept down by your social conditioning or whatever unhealthy ideas you picked up from the people around you, will have a chance to come to the surface when you clear those ideas away. But there are a lot of other things down there as well that can come to the surface. In addition to your natural wisdom, there's your natural greed and there's natural anger your natural fears, your natural delusion, things that can pull you off in all sorts of directions. So don't believe that just whatever comes up in your quiet mind is something that can be trusted. You have to question it. Then you have to keep in mind the fact that you are working on a path that has direction, has very clear instructions. Unfortunately, this path is a path that's got your true interests in mind, unlike the paths that, say, your society, members of your family may have gotten into your head one way or another. The Buddhist path focuses specifically on what is your problem, the fact that the mind is causing suffering for itself, and it gives clear instructions on how to put an end to that. This is something you've got to hold on to, because other parts of your mind will say, no, I don't particularly care for that analysis, or I don't care for that goal. I've got other goals right now. And it's a mistake to think that this is how, somehow the deepest thought in your mind or the most reliable thought in your mind, just because it's coming up when things are cleared up a bit. Remember that image of the committee. And it's not just the committee that's operating on the surface, as we all know in any political discussion. Very rarely do the real operators show their face. They let their puppets act for them. So just because something is hidden doesn't mean it's reliable. There's a game that my stepmother used to play with my father. She wanted something out of him that she knew was unreasonable. And so she wouldn't talk to him for days on end. And want to know what was wrong. What had he done? And at first she wouldn't say, wouldn't say, wouldn't say. Until she knew that he was desperate enough and wanted to do anything to please her. Then she'd make her demand and he'd just be all too happy to give in. And we found ourselves being pushed more and more out of the family as a result. Well, the mind plays that trick on itself. It's not just a trick that you find in couples. It holds things back for a while and can make you miserable. 
You don't know what's going on. Something's wrong. Something's got you depressed. Something's got you worried. Something's got you anxious. But the mind's demand is basically unreasonable, so it knows that you're not going to give in until you're desperate and you want to know what's going on. And so finally, when you're desperate enough, it will come up to the surface. And the simple sense of relief that, ah, at last I know what's going on, makes you believe whatever it says. Well, don't fall for those tricks. Remember, this committee in the mind is not a gathering of saints or the wise old people of your family. There's greed in there, there's anger, there's delusion, there's all kinds of ignorance, fears, jealousy, lots of unskillful things sloshing around in the mind. That's the other reason why things are kept down in the basement. Not necessarily because your social conditioning has pushed them out unrightly or unfairly, because there are a lot of things that you would be embarrassed to admit to yourself, that you actually have these feelings inside. And so they have to act indirectly. One of the reasons we get the mind st still, get it quiet, get it settled down so we can have a sense of well-being and a sense of competence, so that when these things do come to the surface, we could admit, oh yeah, there is greed in there, there is anger, there is delusion. You're also in a position where you realize, I don't have to give in to those things. Just because they're hidden doesn't mean they're true. doesn't mean that they should have control over your life. Because this path that we're on is not just a path of watching whatever happens. You've got a goal. You've got a direction. All the images in the Buddha's teaching have that sense of direction. You're following a path, the path that's meant to go someplace. You're crossing over the river. You're on this side, there's suffering on this side, on the other side it's total freedom from suffering. You want to get over to the other side. When the image is simple and clear like that, it seems like this would just be a simple thing. You're suffering, you don't want to suffer, you follow the path to the end of suffering. But there are parts of the mind that have other agendas. You say, well, before we go to the end of suffering, I'd like to try this a bit, I'd like to try that a bit. Or you take on responsibilities that just eat, eat, eat away at you. So you've got to do what you can to get past these things. This is a truth of the will. In other words, the kind of truth that's not going to happen unless you make up your mind that it will happen. And then you teach yourself to trust that determination. This right here is an important element, the element of trust. Because we, again, we have this sense that, well, my deep feelings down inside, my deepest craving, there's something I must trust about that. I've got to feed it before I can move on. Well, how, how long have you been trusting your craving? Do you know how long? Do you know where it's taken you all these many, many lifetimes? Can't you learn to trust the part of the mind that's at least got its nose above water so it can breathe a bit? So that's, that would be much better, getting over to the other side so I'm not totally immersed in suffering. And you can't wait until everybody is on board before you make the next step. You've got to keep making that step, pushing things finding where there's resistance, learning how to deal with it, and not being surprised that it's there, and not thinking, ah, oh, this is some hidden part of my mind that I didn't see before, I must give it some time to express its wisdom. As in any process of strengthening, you have to push back at the resistance. And 
part of the mind says, well, I've had these ideas before in the past that my reason should be in charge and it made me miserable. Well, what exactly did your reason say? What was informing your reason? And the Buddha's wisdom is something that's got a really good track record. And although his reasons may be really demanding, the rewards are huge. In the beginning, you have to take that on trust. But then again, who are you going to trust? Your greed, your anger, your delusion, your fears? Or would you like to trust the Buddha for a change? Trust the example of the Noble Sangha. So try not to fall for the games that the mind plays on itself. Remember, this is a training for the whole mind, and not just for your gut feelings. What was that joke about how your gut has more nerve endings than your, your brain? You'll never see that in a book, though, but your gut tells you that. Again, how much can you trust your gut? You want to learn how to use your reason. You want to learn how to use all the tricks of the mind. Turn those tricks on the defilements. Don't let them have all the tricks. Talk to your mind. This is another misunderstanding, the idea that somehow the nonverbal part of your mind is wiser than the the conditioned part of the mind, the language, just get rid of get rid of that that conditioning and then you've reached the unconditioned. Well, no. The nonverbal part of your mind is hugely conditioned. All those vague feelings. The reason they're vague is because if they became clear, you'd see right through them. So it's not a matter that your feelings are right and your reasons are wrong or the all the words you've learned from other people are bad for you. You've got to learn how to use your discernment. Some ways in which the mind talks to itself are really unskillful, but you can train it to talk to itself in skillful ways. Learn how to improve the quality of the dialogue in your committee. Try to get the mind still so it's in a position so it can let everybody have their say. And then sort things out, not believing everything the mind tells itself. So when the mind gets still, things will come up. And that's when the work of discernment begins, is figure out, what is this coming up? Is this some suppressed wisdom that's coming up, or is it some suppressed greed, aversion, and delusion that's coming up? And remember, the, the path is not going to be something that's just going to come up and push you to the end. Your discernment has to be in charge to keep reminding yourself, this is the noblest, this is the best, this is the wisest aim that you can have for yourself, the wisest goal you can have for yourself. To learn how to abandon all the unskillful ways the mind creates suffering. And to build. You do have to build the path. It's not going to be a natural flow. You do build the path. It develops some momentum as you build it. To the point where it does have a flow. But it takes determination to go against the stream of your defilements. And that determination is informed by your discernment. And sometimes you have to mean you have to remember, okay, the discernment has to be informed by the determination too. The two have to go together. Remember that image from John Mun's last major Dharma talk. 
you're a soldier going to battle. Your primary weapon is your discernment. And what is the soldier? The soldier is your determination not to come back and suffer ever again. Always try to keep that image in mind. 